Hello and welcome to the Street Crime UK YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Today we're going to take a look at a gang who was jailed for a gun deal after a litter picker had found a firearm in a lead street. A group of men who arranged to meet and hand over guns and ammunition almost had their plan foiled when a litter picker found a bag of a firearm inside of it. The woman was litter picking on the 9th of March 2022, close to some garages near Clayton Court in Leeds, when she came across a bag which had a modified firearm and ammunition inside. Prosecutor Michael Smith told Leeds Crown Court that the barrel of the firearm had been replaced with a smooth one. The court heard the firearm was deemed by police to be functional. Unbeknownst to the officers at the time, Clayton Court was the home of Callum Scott, who was 22 of Spen Walk, who would later be arrested, charged and jailed for the firearms offences. Just over a month later, on April 28, Mr Scott arranged to meet with his co-defendants, Cameron Hansen, who was 21 of Lawrence Crescent, Clayton Johnson, who was 23 of Stonegate Chase, and Alexander Fothergill, who was 21 of Newton Park Grove. He said, at 11.40 a.m., Mr. Fothergill called Mr. Johnson and later sent a message to Mr. Johnson that said, he will see you straight away. Fothergill got in touch with Mr. Hansen and provided Mr. Johnson with the details when Mr. Hansen would be arriving at the property. We don't know how Mr. Scott got that message of when to turn up, but he did. Shortly after, Mr. Johnson was seen in Queens Hill Garden and Mr. Scott was seen at Clayton Court before getting a taxi to the same location. Mr. Smith said Mr. Scott was retrieving guns stored near his house and taking them with him. Mr. Hansen arrived at Queens Hill Garden at around 2 p.m. in a BMW with other people inside. He was seen leaving the driver's seat with a black and white rucksack. Mr. Smith told the court, Mr. Scott arrived five minutes after him and entered the property. The Crown can prove all were in the flat with Mr. Hansen leaving after, about 15 minutes later with the same rucksack. The car he had traveled in was stopped by police just after 3 p.m. Two modified handguns were discovered in the back along with ammunition. The court was told that the firearms were similar to what was found in March. The handguns were found to be functional but not compatible with the ammunition. Mr. Hampson made no comment in his interview and Mr. Smith said Mr. Scott and Mr. Johnson were soon arrested when officers attended the address in Queens Hill Garden. He said police found 800 in notes right next to Callum Scott's bag and him. We say the 800 pound was used to buy the gun as Mr. Hampson Johnson's fingerprints were found on the note. Mr. Scott and Mr. Johnson both denied any offending in their police interview. Mr. Fothergill was not arrested until June, but was caught out following phone analysis. He also answered no comment in all interviews. Mr. Smith said Mr. Johnson, Mr. Scott and Mr. Fothergill were part of an enterprise to supply firearms to Mr. Hanson and his group. Mr. Scott had previously been in possession of similar firearms and ammunition, which was not sold because it was recovered before they could be dealt with. He was trusted to have sought firearms and sell them. He was trusted to return the money to others who would have to receive the benefits for his actions. As well as the firearm offences, Mr. Hansen also failed to be sentenced for a number of drug offences after a black Seat Ibiza he was driving on Moreland Road in Leeds was stopped on April 24, 2020. £3,000 was found under the passenger seat of the car. He told officers the money belonged to his mother. Mr. Smith told the court he was put in the back of the police vehicle while checks were made and he had access to his phone. Hanson was captured on camera calling his mother and asking her to lie for him, which she refused to do. This aggravated Mr. Hanson and his phone was taken by the police. Mr. Hanson spat at the police and had to be arrested whilst wearing a spit gun. Mr. Smith added, this was when the pandemic was at its height and the officers were concerned about that, especially the defendant said he had hoped they got COVID. During his interview, Mr. Hansen apologized for spitting but continued to insist the money belonged to his mother. The court was told that Mr. Johnson failed to be sentenced for separate drug matters due to offenses that took place in 2020. Police stopped his car he was driving with a co-defendant who had been sentenced in York in Ripton on October the 28th, 2020. Mr. Smith told the court a bag of blue tablets were found on the passenger. 500 pound in cash and two mobile phones, one linked to Mr. Johnson, were also found. 58 to 59 tablets of MDMA, heroin worth 100 pounds and cocaine worth 30 to 50 pounds was found on the passenger. Mr. Johnson's DNA 
was found on a package of cocaine recovered from the passenger and when his address was searched by the police they recovered scales with cocaine residue on them. Mr Smith said when the mobile phone linked to Mr Johnson was activated texts between users and himself including offers to supply class A drugs in form of group texts were found. The prosecutor added it is the Crown's case he was involved in supplying drugs in North Yorkshire area. Mr Johnson already had 23 previous convictions for 20 offences including common assault and battery. Matthew Harding representing Mr Scott told the court a pre-sentence report had been carried out and a number of character references had been put forward. He said he knows the impact of his offending will have not just on him and others. He told the court that since being remanded into custody Mr Scott has undertaken 10 courses before he was transferred to HMP Hall. Mr Harding said he is a capable young man. Catherine Robinson from Mr. Hansen said he was 20 at the time of the offence. He was living with his mum and his girlfriend who still support him. His plans are to finish the course he started at college and he has been completing the course in custody. It is most unfortunate that someone with support and his potential has ended up in this situation because of his addiction to cannabis. For Mr. Johnson, Matthew Stewart said that he would have been 21 at the time he committed the drug offences and was a facilitator in relation to the firearms crimes. Mr Stewart said he grew up with his mum and his three sisters and has had contact with his dad since his late teens. The issue with his dad perhaps made him more susceptible to gang culture. He has a daughter who is free. The court heard that Mr Johnson has a job in custody and has also undertaken English and art courses. Cara Furt for Mr Fothergill said he wants a better life for him and his family. He accepts he was a facilitator. He had no knowledge beyond that. He admits that he was focused on integrating himself into group but accepts that there was a financial motivation and did expect some payment for his role but that was never confirmed. Miss Firth told the court Mr Fothergill was very remorseful. Mr Hansen was jailed for eight years and four months for possessing criminal property, common assault, criminal damage, conspiracy to supply prohibited weapons, conspiracy to possess firearms, conspiracy to possess ammunition and possessing criminal property and conspiracy to supply cannabis. Mr Johnson was jailed for eight years and three months for conspiracy to supply prohibited weapons, conspiracy to possess firearms, conspiracy to possess ammunition, possessing criminal property, conspiracy to supply cannabis, possessing MDMA with intent to supply, possessing diamorphine with intent to supply, possessing cocaine with intent to supply and offering the supply of heroin and cocaine. Mr Scott was jailed for six years for conspiracy to supply prohibited weapons, conspiracy to possess firearms, conspiracy to possess ammunition, Possessing criminal property and conspiracy to supply cannabis. Mr. Fothergill was jailed for four years and six months for conspiracy to supply prohibited weapons, conspiracy to possess firearms, and conspiracy to possess ammunition. Detective Chief Inspector Jonathan Key from West Yorkshire Police Programme Position said, I am very pleased with these sentences that have been handed to these four individuals today. As part of this investigation, we were able to take two guns out of the hands of criminals and off the streets of Lee, making it a safer place for everyone. Offences involved involving firearm will never be tolerated within West Yorkshire. Our program precision team treats all cases of this kind extremely serious and we will bring all offenders to justice. Thank you for joining us today. What are your opinions on the crimes committed by Mr Hanson, Mr Johnson, Mr Fothergill and Mr Scott? Do you believe the sentences were too harsh or not harsh enough? Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this content please don't forget to like and share. And if you're new to the channel and want to see more Street Crime UK content, hit subscribe and press that bell so you can join us on the next video. Thank you for joining us and until next time, stay safe.